have a place inside of your mind that you can see really clearly. What would my five-year-old self just want to live in and never leave to be able to pull that out? That's why many people make art. It's like, what do I want to see? The forest is one of the most truly collaborative spaces. It's what I think of when I think of Meow Wolf artists coming together in a project. It just has a lot in it. All the different ideas that fit in a more natural space got distilled into being in the forest space. There was a significant team of people working on the forest all the time. I was project managing 80 artists' projects. Though I designed a lot of what happened, I also had no real control over what the shapes of the trees were gonna be. They have to be wide enough to accept all these walkways and things, so they can't really have a slender, tapering tree look like is in some of the concept art. We had no 3D modeling, and it's a very complex space in three dimensions. We were like taping out on the floor, just like taking the blueprint and trying to tape all of that out and like put trees in it. And we all stood in it and we were like, okay. <laughs> Tree bark is the work of thousands of hours of work from a dozen or so people. So many hours of sculpting lath in tree bark shapes. We had a really large team of artists that basically hand sculpted the bark. Sculpting the bark was a really lovely meditative thing to do. It felt like cookie dough, <laughs> which was fun. And we made our own little tools so we could open and close them as we pulled them through the material. to make this undulating bark divot. One of the most difficult projects in the forest were the mushrooms on the trees. I had to fabricate all the tech that went into them. There's no off-the-shelf solution for that lighting. This is Instamorph. Instamorph is a thermoplastic, meaning you put it in boiling water, you heat it with a heat gun, and it turns into a transparent version of itself that you can mold. I'm trying to fill hot plastic with wet paint. <laughs> it's the easiest way to get what we want. We ran the conduit before we really knew how we were going to even attach the mushrooms to the tree. The wiring has to go through the tree because there's the mushrooms on the outside and on the inside where no one can go is our tech closet. It's a madhouse in there, just the amount of wiring coming in. These are all interactive. They're not, it's not on right now, the interactivity element, but it will be that you can like tap on them and they will make a mushroomy sound that was literally, at least partially recorded by squashing mushrooms. Um, and they will affect the sound and light in the entire forest. You need to make them sparkle. That canopy is definitely one of my favorite things in the whole show. It's such an active, like, living space. <laughs> so these leaves have been a crazy drama in themselves. They're all laser cut, and there are like 2,000 of them. The canopy is made out of Tyvek. And I designed a leaf cut pattern so that a sheet of Tyvek could hang anywhere from, depending on where you picked it up, five feet to, you could bunch it up into something that's like this big. So you could have this really flexible, really organic chunk of canopy. Thousands of hours went into just like peeling and hanging Tyvek leaves. I spent weeks installing the orbs and the vines, establishing the composition of all of the big marks of light in the sky. <laughs> it was very beautiful up above. We are immersed in the things as we make them. It's a really incredible way to work. For the electrical layer, it was really like, did we wire this properly? Did we spec out our power supplies properly? I wonder if it happened when we were, like, the very first time we hung this. Uh -huh. 
and that we put 14 backward. Yeah, maybe. It definitely got two points where it felt like there was no possible way this net of lights we had created would ever turn on at the same time. There was a lot of Googling and I was like, wow, this is dangerous for us to just be like doing off the cuff electrical calculations that really make a difference in the amount of heat that is being dispensed. We're getting ready for the electrical inspection because it's just never ending. It's just a constant like whirlwind of things to tie in. That was definitely terrifying, but we figured it out so everyone can sleep at night. The physical aspect of the work was grueling. My feet hurt so bad from just standing up all day. Working on the concrete and just the hours we were pulling were nuts. We were working like 100 hour weeks. Oh, and there's, you know, not really heat exactly in the building. We lost power quite often. So there were times that we were working with headlamps. We just had to keep going. Hopefully when the lights come back on, this will actually look like something that we want to be there, you know? I think because there was so much work to be done that nobody had the time to freak out. <laughs> this is where you'll find me always because I never left. <laughs> we all got used to how hard that work was physically and it just kind of became normal. We all got really tough and strong. There are people who are full time and just got here. There are people who've been here for a year. And so all of those experiences, all of those energy levels <laughs> are gonna be really different. I usually close the place down because our projects were never ending. It changes once there's no one else there. There is something else in there. There would always be sounds that just didn't make any sense. I think it's time to go. <laughs> we only found out that we were gonna have to fire treat everything a couple of months before we opened. At first, we just were searching for off-the-shelf products and we couldn't find anything that we could use for Tyvek because it's mostly non-absorbent. I just remember just kind of turning off. The whole purpose of that space is to come through these smaller spaces and it opens up and you look up. And if that had a black warehouse ceiling, then you're not in a forest, you're in a warehouse with some trees in it. And we found this company out of California that was like, we can make a fire treatment material for anything. They treated all of the leaves. It was an incredible process, weeks and weeks of work. Not as much fun as I thought it <laughs> We ran out of AstroTurf, so we couldn't AstroTurf the entire forest until at a later date, and we just had to let it go. So we, we fixed that at the first upgrades. We put way more AstroTurf in. We were making a forest floor with all these cardboard modules and uh, we're gluing carpet to them to make some sort of blend between a living room and a forest. This is steel. <laughs> which is amazing because we've never had the capacity to make things out of steel before. We have two welders in particular who are our heroes, Amy and Jeff. Amy Westfall was the main artist behind the metal of the trees. Jeff bands off to the railings. I don't think there's a direction you can go that won't have someone working on something confusing. The forest has a lot of little spaces within it. Each tree has a space on top and on the bottom. There are a lot of things in the canopy. There are those beautiful owls by an artist named Julia Szeski. You would never know, but all of the beautiful little ombre edges exclusively made out of cigarette butts. You 
put so much time and work and love into a project. And so it's like a mix of pride and exhaustion. <laughs> I'm gonna say, yeah, it was definitely worth it. And to see other people coming in and really benefiting from the work and including ourselves. To be able to like, pull that fairy forest out of the collective consciousness and have a glowing forest that is ours and share that with anybody who can get in there. And that's why, that's why you make them. So you can go there.